All right, Hiss J, Desiree, Jennifer Jeffredos. Um, welcome to the class. Um, this is module five. So I did put everything in the Google Drive. So if you guys have been able to jump on the Google Drive, you should be able to see all of our lessons. Let me see if I can give you the uh, link here. Um, so we're doing a lot of refreshing and review. I've got a lot of um, new vocabulary words, um, but you gotta remember that I've gotta type things up and I'm not a good typist. <laughs> I'm just gonna put it out there. I'm not the greatest typist there. So I go slow. And uh, if anybody has ever heard of the term, you like pigeon peck, that's me. Because I just, I did not go to school for typing. <laughs> um, so anyway, it's taken me a little bit longer than I wanted it to, but we've got a lot of good words and stuff that, um, I think that, you know, it's interesting to me. So I thought, well, maybe you guys would like that as well. So let me get, uh, let me get my book here. So I wrote all these, these little words down in this notebook that I have. But these are some of the uh, ideas and words that I thought people might be interested in learning. Because, you know, if you don't use the words or if you don't um, ever learn the words, you're not going to know how to pronounce them. And um, some of them are, um, this is from the old dictionary. So some they're not in the new green dictionary. And uh, we have some Ohio say, well, that's not how I say it. And that's not how I say it over there. But these are, like I said, old words. And uh, let me see if I can give you the, show you the dictionary here. Okay, this is the dictionary. All right, Christy. All right, you got that. But this is the Dictionary of Muskogee and English Council House Museum, Okmulgee, Oklahoma um, edition. So that's what I got it out of. So you'll, you know, Christy, you'll be able to see it. And I think you can get it on the um, Red State Gallery online um, or, you know, Amazon. Amazon's really good. And uh, for those of us who are on a budget, I find some of this stuff on eBay for like $5.99. <laughs> so, you know, not telling you to do one way or the other. Just saying sometimes I people are on a budget. So there's some of these things that um, I was looking at, like uh, a writer, um, hummingbird, the womb. You know, if you're talking about family, you know, a child in the womb. Let's see. Uh, red earth. Egan Ajati. Egan Egana Jati. And some of these are, are, when I show some of these words to our speakers and try to get them to look at it, it's it's new to them as well. So I thought that was pretty cool that we're getting new words, um, even for some of our speakers. So we'll sit there and we'll talk about some things. But before I present anything to you guys, I want to make sure that I'm doing everything correctly. And um, I don't I want to make sure that I pronounce things correctly. I know a lot of them and I can hear it in my head, but like I've told you guys, sometimes what you hear in your head and how you know how to pronounce it, when you're speaking, it does not come out your mouth because, you know, we need that practice. One of the ones that I really like is Ido Ofa, Ido Ofa, the forest. I'm really, I really enjoy nature. I really enjoy walking around and saying Mado. So now I can say Mado, Ido Ofa, the forest. Mado ido, the tree. Uh, Mado bahi, the grass. And there's, like I said, a leader. Here's a word for a leader. Here's a word for Frenchman. So I put all these, and I'm going to, like I said, we're going to do a lot of vocabulary words. But before we do that, I have to type them up. And like I said, I'm not the best typer. My husband can just like, choo -choo 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 -choo. He's, uh, he's personnel, though. So he was trained in that way. I was not. And glistening. Snapping turtle, loja yikcha, loja yikcha, snapping turtle. Let's see, to wink. I'm not sure how to pronounce that, but these are some of the cool things that I went through the dictionary and thought, well, if, I, if they were interesting for me, I think that they would be interesting for you. Muskrat, Epsom salts, Okchan Hiliswa is Epsom salt. So Okchanwa is salt, so Okchan Hiliswa. Eliswa, um, 
I think that's more like heaven. So heavenly salts, Epsom salts, and you think about healing. So, you know, um, what Mahaya Barnett says, our, our uh, language is really descriptive. So if they don't have some of these words, they describe what they're talking about. So, um, and here's a different way to say uncle, Bawa, B-A-U-W-V. So like I said, we've gone through this. I'm going through um, um, trying to get the new infinitive verbs from this. And here's one that says to stretch oneself. Sinipkita, but I'm not sure how to present that because I'm like, okay, to stretch yourself as like to test yourself or to physically stretch yourself like yoga. So some a lot of these I'm trying to get on top of before I present it to you guys because there's a lot of questions. And like I said, sometimes you, you hear a word and you're thinking, oh, okay, pass me the peas, pass me the eggs. And this is not the same word as pass me a plate. <laughs> and we've learned that. So that's pretty cool that um, these are out there. All right. So before we get started, does any ha anybody have any questions? I know last week, we uh, or was it Monday, we did, um, we did do a little bit of Honka stories. And for those of you who are in the class on Friday, I um, put some... Um, we're going to do Honka stories on Friday. Oh my goodness. I have no idea how some of this stuff came on here. Let me see. <laughs> and I do apologize if I'm taking a little. Oh, you guys can't see it. Woo. <laughs> it was a pictures that I have used of in my words to the day. And I'm not sure how they got onto this Google Drive. But let me just move it for you guys so you guys don't have to worry about that. All right. So I haven't been able to make our new song. Um, like I said, we're just out and about and all of the um, all of the Mahayas are really busy. So um, including myself. So we're just kind of running here and there. I'm trying to find our song so we can sing. Normally I get it up there, but I've just been working, working, working. And today it's like it's been really cold and my I don't know my my you sometimes you what you roll out of bed and you're like in a good mood sometimes you roll out of bed grudgingly today I rolled out of bed I'm like okay I gotta go to work and it's like you haven't found that energy yet and that's me I'm trying to find my energy right now so I think by singing our song I think we should be able to find that let me see if I can oh you guys aren't sharing this Make sure it's shared for you guys. And let's go ahead and sing our song. Our singing <laughs> and uh, it gets our mouth ready for moving and gets our mouth ready for speaking Muskogee. It also, I don't know if you can feel it, but it also gets your your spirit in the mood for speaking Muskogee. Um, so that really helps me. So I feel better. I feel it, it, um, energized a bit anyway. All right. So let's go ahead and look at, okay, you're good. You guys can see that. Look at our our um, our stuff here. So these are our, our, our greeting. This J means hello. Remember when we were when um, Mahaya Barnett or some of the other speakers talk about 
um, spelling it out in Muskogee sounds, they're talking about the alphabet. And um, I just wanted to throw this in there because we have people at different levels of speaking Muskogee. Um, we have beginning, middle, and you know, um, close to being fluent. So these are for um, all of us to review and refresh. So his J, you would spell it he, I, C, G, A. His J. All right. Estongo, how are you? Estongesos, I am well. Hidimahi, very good or very well. Mado, thank you. Inga, you are welcome. Ihi, Ihe, or Ihi is yes, and monks is no. All right, does anybody want to, and we're just, just briefly go over this, does anybody want to take a line and just spell something out phonetically? You can, un, um, you can unmute, take a line, and just spell it out phonetically so we can hear, you know, the sounds. Is anybody going to challenge themselves this morning? All right. Okay, so let me go ahead and do estongesos. E, C, T, O, N, H, A, C. Estonges, O, C. Estonges, Os. And I will do one more. Monks, which is no. M, O, N, H, C. Monks. All right. So in the future, when I say, hey, sound it out, I mean, spell it in Muskogee sounds, you'll know what I'm talking about. And you guys have this available if you guys want to practice. All right. Um, I have a copy of our infinitive verbs from uh, modules one, two, and three. Um, like I said, I'm going through the dictionary. I'm going through this dictionary and trying to find our new infinitive verbs. So, but until I get that done, these are the infinitive verbs that we can use to make our sentences. And um, let me go over these for you. Okay, Muskogee infinitive verbs. Lifkida, to run. Nojida, to sleep. Legida, to sit. Yakabida, to walk. Wakida, to lie down. Akopanida, to play. Upanida, to dance. Daskida, to jump. Oh, okay. <laughs> Christy, you practice in secret. It's okay. That's okay. I know sometimes I'm sitting there and uh, words or sometimes just sounds get stuck in my head and I'll just keep saying it over and over. And my husband's like, what are you doing? I'm like, this is stuck in my head. I've got to say it. <laughs> and it's our Muskogee words. You'll, you'll find that sometimes you'll get to the point where you're going to dream in Muskogee words. And you're like, what am I dreaming about? What is that word? And, uh, you know, it happens to all of us, and it's really it's really cool when um, you can understand that your mind is still processing, even if you don't understand what we're going over in, in, in our um, class here, you will, your mind will remember it. And um, you'll come to the point where it's an aha moment where you're like, aha, I got that. So that that's a really cool um, feeling to have because you're like, oh, I'm learning, and I didn't realize it. All right, and here's another list of our Muskogee words, uh, infinitive verbs that we have had. If it's going to come up, there we go. All right. She's working good this morning. She's just a little slow because it's cold outside. So one screen is doing well. All right. Yehegeda, to sing. You can see that I have done this. Um, this isn't the very first one because I broke it down. As we go through everything when I'm teaching, I, I'm learning as well, so you guys are helping me learn. So you see that I broke it down a little bit easier for us to see. Yehegeda, to sing. Ojeda, to hear. Opaneda, opaneda, to speak, to talk. Ojejeda, to write. Ojonayeda, to read. Agekeda, to cry. Athada, to go about. Adotkeda, to work. All right, let's see. Yeah, he did it. Bohida. Abuna did it. Ho chase it. Oh, who need it? Hake kidder. I said it. I took kidder. 
right. I don't think I did that on the previous one. So let's go back to that one. Here we go. All right. Here we go. Lilikira Nojida Laikira Yagabeda Wakira Akobaneda Obaneda Taskira. All right, and again, the reason why I put the uh, speakers to our PowerPoints is I'm still learning. I'm still kind of trying to capture the sounds. So when you learn something in sports or anything, you want to go to the person who knows it the best. Uh, uh, you know, uh, a first speaker, you know, a football player, somebody who's got all these awards for football, soccer, baseball. So, you know, like I said, I'm still learning. So I want you guys to hear and try to emulate how our speakers sound. And I try to... Um, speak to many different speakers so we can have different sounds in our head. And the funny thing is when I'm doing this and when I start um, um, asking them questions, I can hear their voice in my head. So I can start to emulate their sounds and you can, you can hear, it's got a rhythm to it. The Muskogee language has a rhythm to it and has a, I, I wanna call it a flavor, but it's something that, you know, Muskogee, it's almost like, um, especially in the preaching and the singing, you can hear reverence and you can hear respect. But that's how our, our native um, words are and our native songs are. And uh, the cool thing is a lot of these things that I tell you guys, the scientists are just now starting to um, understand what our native people had been talking about. The language has a rhythm and it has a sound and it has a, a energy. So the cool thing is scientists are just now starting to understand our native songs and sounds and, and uh, words. All right. Muskogee infinitive verbs, wethida, to stand, ayida, to go, ayida, to make, nitida, to buy, ombida, to eat, iskida, to drink, ijida, to see, gethida, to learn. Again, number five is my favorite, Hombada, because when I think about Hombada and, and uh, you know, some of you guys know me, um, we have a good time. We'll sit there and talk and we'll have a good meal. And I think that's our, you know, with soul food, not only physical, but in your spirit, Poya Viccha, your spirit. You'll get that feeling of, oh, this is, this is such a good time. And it gets to the point where it's like, you don't, it doesn't matter what you're eating, it's matter who you're eating with and the interaction that you get. So I think to me, humbida is like our soul food, spiritually and physically. All right. Huitida. Ayida. Hayida. Nisida. Humbida. Iskida, Hejida, Gethida. All right, and you see here number two, she goes Ayida, but for those of us who are learning, you know the, the V is the U uh sound. So just like you talk to anybody, they have their own um, um, way to say things. And since we're learning, we can hear it and we can catch it. And some of the speakers who've been speaking for their lifetime, they're like, what are you talking about? I said it, because we just was talking about that today. So it's Ayida, for those of us who are learning, but she said, kind of says Ayida. You know you know what she's talking about. I'm not gonna tell a speaker that they're wrong. So <laughs> I'm not gonna get in that, I'm not gonna get that bag of worms. <laughs> All right, does anybody have any questions so far? All right, so what we have been learning um, in the other um, uh, modules is how to conjugate. Today, you know, I'll go through the future two tense conjugation. I want to get to that first before we go through some of our other um, vocabulary words. 
is because I know it gets really dry when I sit here and try to share with you guys some of this stuff. But if you download the template and you get the template going, then you can just um, conjugate all of these infinitive verbs that we just went over. I am doing something, you are doing something, he is doing something, she is doing something, it is doing something, and they are doing something. And that's just a small bit of our, our Muscogee language. So sometimes people ask me questions and I'm not familiar with the answer or how to answer them. But like I said, I'm still learning. We're all still learning. And it's just a, what I'm showing you is just a small amount of what there is to learn. If you think about English, the same thing goes with English. All right. Let's see. I forgot to put an empty, uh, empty page on here. And I'm not sure what this is. Okay. So, uh, for some reason, she downloaded some weird stuff today. And I don't know where it came from. <laughs> All right, so here's the template. All right, well, let me see if I can go over the, here it is. Let me go over the rules first. So future two tense, distant future. So let me go over the rules. There is L grading, but only in the first person. Uh, a, the, to the. All right, so because we're talking about I, this rule right here, number two, we're talking about I, we are going to use a or a, ah. so first person. Remember when we talk about second person, it. And the third person is nothing. So basically in the parentheses you see there is she, he, it, or they. So a, uh, it, or nothing, first, second, and third. Or you can say hamgen, pokolen, prochinen, prochinen. So just try to play with Muscogee and try to use it wherever you can. I know I don't want to sound funny. I, I tried a few natural speakers, but I know. <laughs> yes. So when you're speaking to some of our Muscogee speakers, you got to remember that they speak regional, different sound, um, just like Athada. She go or yeah, and she said Ayida, Athada. We are more trained because we're beginning to try to be more precise, which, you know, you think about in English too, you go south, they're speaking English, but it's not as precise as probably how we've learned it. Um, same thing up north. And they got their different pauses, their new, their different nuances like A, <laughs> here up north A, <laughs> you know, and then the south, you have, you hear slang everywhere. So anyway, all right, so these are our rules. L grading, but only in the first person. A the to the. You drop your ETV. You add your person marker, which is a, it, or nothing. And add your tense marker, a the, which means will. So we will do something. First person, a the. That's why right here, first person in these rules, distant future, we are going to do a the instead of a the. Add your declarative ending S, which means the period at the end of the sentence. Ask me why these rules work. I have no idea. <laughs> this is how I learn. And um, you know, when I talk to the speakers, they're like, well, we don't go by rules, we just know. <laughs> and for me, I can't just know because I haven't been brought up in the language. I have to go step by step and by rules. And I think a lot of you guys you know, understand and learn the same way. So here is our template. Remember I was telling you I was going to make the template so you guys will see um, how to conjugate and everything should be on here for first person. And I will briefly go over a couple of them so you understand what I'm talking about, conjugating infinitive verbs to what, how you want the sentence to say, right? So again, first person, you put your um, infinitive verb here to whatever, hombeda to eat. Hombeda, you drop your ETV, get your verb stem, H O M P. I will show you in a second. I'm just going over it. Yes, L grading, but only in first person. First person goes from athada to the, I mean, athada, athi to the, because remember, since we're using um, the person marker, ah, you can't put a ah and a ah together. That creates a diphthong. So that's why this the first person has its own um, rule. 
add your person marker, you add your fee, and that means will, and you add your S, which is the declared meaning means it's a period, which before it, mean it, it meant am, are, is, today it's going to be a period. You put your verb stem here, home, person marker, ah, the means will, S, the end of the sentence, and then home office. Home bodies. I will eat. And like I said, home video is my favorite. So let me go ahead and conjugate this for you. It's going to take a little, a little uh, finagling. Like I said, I'm not as well as some of the other Mahayas. So I got to do a little stretch. But well, you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. And um, like I said, if this is really confusing to you guys, just stay in the class and it'll start making sentence. I know Christy, Robert, Nikki, you guys, you guys pretty much know how to conjugate and what I'm talking about. But for those of you who are new, I know it's it's kind of kind of up there. But stay with us. It'll start making sense. Homeda to eat. So like I said, print out this um this template and you can conjugate anything, any of the infinitive verbs that we have given you. Homeda. Oh, okay. Then you drop your ETV. So you drop this, you get your verb stem. And you hear people call verb stem. I also heard somebody call it the root. All right. Oh, yes, there's L grading, but only in first person. So we're going to use RE. So you're going to drop everything down. Oh. Add your person marker. Since we're doing I, I am doing something, you add the up. All right. Drop everything down. And to actually get to understanding this the best, it would it would be best for you to try to practice at least a couple of them and understand. Your mind will start understanding. Your, your, uh, you'll have muscle memory when you're writing. And once you start getting all of these um, little bits flowing, it'll start popping in your head a little bit easier. All right, so you uh, drop your H-O-M-P, you add your A, ah, and you add your R-E-T, All right? So I've got to move, oh, I've got to move it all up because I'm a little bit not as tall as some of the other Mahayas. All right, okay, annotate. So you got H O M P. Remember your verb stem, H O M P, because we drop the E T V. You drop everything down, H O M P A. Uh, then you add your T, means will. And since it's the first person, that's why we do A R E, because there's A R E. And then you drop everything down again. All right, add your declarative S means the period. I know for some reason in when I was learning um, in college, I would always forget the period. So I always put this in big letters so I don't forget it. So if you see something, I'm not yelling at you. I'm just trying to remind myself. So verb stem. Oh, your um, person marker right here. Your uh, tense marker will end the period. Hombathis. Hombathis. All right. Move all this down up. All right. Okay. So the way I try to uh, do my. Um, um, my presentations, I try to do it so I color code it so you know where everything goes. If you get lost, just look at the color codings and the arrows. So verb stem or root. Oh, right here. Person marker. We're talking about I today. Right there. Add your tense marker will. R E B. Right here. And the period at the end of the sentence is the S. 
combates, combates. All right. So when you look at this, because we did conjugate it, you know that this is talking about eating. This is talking about who we're talking about, which is I. This is talking about will. And this is the period. I will eat. All right. So that's the cool thing about how I've learned to do it is you know what every part of this sentence is. And it's funny because humpida means to eat. We just conjugate it and now we know I will eat. We'll eat this evening, this afternoon, tomorrow. You know, it's something in the future. I will eat. So you know what each part of this is. You've got your verb stem, person marker, tense marker. You know that that means will and the period at the end of the sentence. So um, eat, I will. So basically, if you want to translate it, um, you put it down. If you want to translate it literally, what it literally is saying, and I'll just put this here, literally saying, it's um, eat, then this part is I will, and that's the period. Eat, I will, and you change it backwards to English, Hear anybody caught that? I will eat. Oh, I see Robert taking his head. I will eat. All right. So now you know what this whole thing is. Homida. That's to eat. You conjugated this whole thing, homida, to homebathis. Homebathis. Eat, I will, I will eat. All right. So now you know that to eat, you made a sentence. So, like I said, we are used to, those of us who have uh, started English first are used to doing steps. So that's why this for me works the best is because we are taking steps and we all know what each part of the step is. And since uh, see, I have a little time here, I'm going to pick a different infinitive verbs because you guys have probably seen me do humbida many, many times. So let me go ahead and do, for some reason, I like this word, pohira, pohira, to hear. So, oh, I forgot to switch it over here. And, okay, all right. We try to move that up. P-O-H-E, pohira. It's hard for me to stretch, so I am stretching. It means to hear. Here. Okay, remember, Pohida, P O H E T E T V. Drop it down, Pohida, E T V. Take that out. You drop your verb stem or your root. Pohida, because on its own, it doesn't mean anything. And that's one of the conversations I've had with uh, some of these first speakers. They go, oh, that doesn't mean anything. Or hump, like humbida, humbida. And I was like, yeah, but it's, it's we're conjugating. We're going, we're in the middle of something. Drop it all down. Oh, you add your person marker because we're doing the first person. Ah, uh, I, I am doing something. Add everything down, add your the, means will. So I will. And this is why it's right here because after you add all this, it's A-R-E, office. Cool. office, office, which the S means the period at the end of the sentence because remember, we are conjugating sentences. I know it's it's really weird, um, but it's a whole sentence. Okay, let's see. Trying to move that around. Okay. 
And remember the S is a period. Verb stamp full. Verb stamp or again root. Ah, it's a person marker right here. Means I. The means will. And S is the period at the end of the sentence. Full office. I will hear. All right. So you go from full hither to here, and you go full office. Okay. Here. Oh, gonna say here. I will period here so you go to here to here i will or the english backward translation is i will here with a period all right does that make sense like i said this is all out there we've gone over conjugations before those of you who are new just look at all these infinitive verbs conjugations that I mean infinitive verbs that I have put in our folder. So you can see and you can sit there and practice. And if you have any questions, feel free to, you know, ask in our next class or even email me. Hey, you know, how does this work? Or did I miss a step or something? But that's why I put in our template. Because like I said before, when I was going through college. It would have been so cool if I had this template, but these are all from the notes that I took and all from my blood, sweat, and tears and, you know, just crying. I don't know. It's too much. It's too much. <laughs> and I, some, I know sometimes I'm not the only one who probably goes, what the heck did I just learn? I just sat in here for an hour. What the heck did I just learn? It just takes time. And it takes time. Um, if you look at, you know, um, a lot of our... Um, Stajati people were observers of uh, of nature, and, and uh, I've heard that before. And if you think about, if you haven't had rain for a while, and then all of a sudden it starts storming and thundering, you get a flood, you know, things back up, but eventually it starts sinking in. That's kind of what, um, what I feel like happens when we're learning something new is like, it's all flooded, it's all up here in your noggin, and you're like, what the heck? But after you calm down a while, your mind is still working and it's still processing, and then it starts to make sense. But sometimes it's not for a while, and some people pick it up really fast. I told uh, my, my family, I was like, I was kind of, uh, I was kind of, um, uh, well, okay, I was really impressed with some of the younger students who were in the class because they would pick things up like this, and I told my, my son and my daughter, I'm like, I'm kind of jelly. Because they just like pick it up, pick it up. Get, and 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 Desiree has to go long mouth, you know, carry the one. You know, just like I showed you guys. Have to do the long template step by step by step by step because that's how I can understand it and I can um, process it. So if if you can just go ahead and go from home and you know to home base to home office. Awesome. But for me and for some other people, we might have to do the long math. And then eventually it catches on to where you don't even have to conjugate because you'll look at it and you're like, oh, these are the steps. And that's where I want to get to is those are the steps. All right. Okay. So like I said, these are our infinite verbs. We've got this one. Use the uh, template, try it, infinitive verbs. You'll see what it means um, and what each thing means to read, to cry, to go about, to work, to write, to speak, to talk, to sing, to hear. Full hit up. All right. So, like I said, those are infinitive verbs. Just plug and play. Try to do it as the conjugation in the template. And like I said, not everybody needs the template, but you know, there's some of us who do. So I'm trying to capture everybody as we're walking along and just hold our hands and let's keep going forward. All right, lift it up, launch it up, leg it up, pick up it up, walk it up, walk it up, walk it up, get up. Those are our 
other infinitive verbs. And the last ones, I think I, here it is. Actually, this is the first that I remember. Quifida, to stand. Ayida, to go. Ayida, to make. Nithida, to buy. Ombida, to eat. Iskida, to drink. Ijida, to see. Gethida, to learn. Again, if you lose the sound of these words, these are PowerPoints. You see on there, they're PowerPoints with the speakers um, speaking what we need to learn. All right. And I had made some classroom terms in one of the previous modules. And these are just some things if you're, um, when you're learning, um, if you want to practice Muskogee, if you have a question, then, you know, you can say uh, right here, Hodamagus. Say it again. So let me go through the classroom terms, and this should be a PowerPoint too. Okay, Kithaks, I don't know. Legibus, have a seat. Adamagus, say it again. Amanagus, help. Mabohages, listen. Aegis, look. Bikhonis, stop. Mahaya, teacher. Chihijiyat. It is good to see you. So that's something I should be saying. Like I said, I'm still learning. So I have to, if you guys came in this office, you would see all these sticky notes everywhere, different colors. I took a picture one time and I posted it uh, to my husband and said, hey, look at my work. And what did he see? He saw all my sticky notes. He's like, dang girl, what the heck? I had colors everywhere. <laughs> so so I'm, on, I'm going to try as well. It is Chihijiya Idi. It is good to see you. Ian Ohlejis, put it here. Choga Hija, student. And Ankitska, do you understand me? And like I said, I have the speakers here so you can hear what how it sounds. Legibus Hadamagas Amanages Mabuhages. He just fikunas mahaya chihijaya hisitos hian uhlejas choga hija angif iska. So, like I said, I have almost everything that I have in here. I have uh, one speaker saying it, so we can try to emulate how they talk the uh, inflections of their voice and words. Um, so I don't like to leave anybody hanging. And I know from experience that sometimes when you hear it in class, you're like, okay, I got it, I got it. And then, you know, 10 o'clock at night, look, the next morning you're like, I don't know what I just said. I don't remember. All right. And like I said, we're trying to get our vocabulary built up so we can start making simple sentences. Okay, the nature words, yeah. Hussi, sun, Hathisi, moon. And one of the things that I, why I put all of these there is if you're in the morning, you're drinking your coffee, and that's coffee, <laughs> coffee. You're drinking your coffee, walk outside and say hello to nature, or say, Hasaga Masi, Mado, thank you, creator, you know, the breath giver. Um, so these are words of respect and, um, so, and at practice, we go outside and say, Mado Hasi, Mado Hathisi, Mado Bahi, grass, Mado Ido, tree. And then for snow, which we don't get a lot here, thank goodness, <laughs> is Hituti, Hituti Hatki, Hituti Thako. Those are three different spellings for the word snow. So whenever, if you're in a place that has snow and you love the snow, walk out with your coffee and say, Mado, hiruri, hiruri haki, hiruri tako, mado. <laughs> and then again, wiwa and owa is for water. Hotoli is wind. Dotka is fire. Igana, earth. Suta, sky. Hachi, hachi, river. Hachi, Hachi, yeah, Hachi River, Hachuji is stream. We we'll get those two confused. So big water and stream, little, little water. I think Hachuji, Uji is usually little. So 
I'm thinking of, of um, the descriptive words. Kolaswa or Kojo Jumba, star, Aholoji, cloud, Kotali Thako, hurricane, Ituti Nithka, hell, Ido Isi, Do Isi, Do Wisi, leaf. I have only heard Do Wisi um, recently. I had never heard that before, but those are words for leaf, right? And the next one is Ayadicha, Ayadicha, nature, morning star. Now that one I need practice on as well. Let's see if we uh, we have the audio for this one. Hasi, sun. Hasi, see, moon. Bahi, grass. Ido, tree. Hirudi, Hirudi, hotki. Hirudi, thako. Snow. Uwa. Wiwa. Water. Ulali. Win. Dutka. Fire. Egana. Earth. Suda. Sky. Hachi. River. Hachuji. Stream. Kulaswa. Star. Oja Jamba, star, Aholoji, cloud, Udali Thakko, hurricane, Hirudi Nithka, hail, Iru Isi, Do Isi, Do Isi, leaf, Hayadija, morning star. Right, so you can see how a speaker would say it. And like I said, I since we don't say these very often, sometimes, even though I know them and I've said them before, it sometimes it becomes a tongue twister because we have to speak Muskogee and it's not like English. And sometimes our mouth and our brain are not connected and you just have to keep practicing. All right. Come on. It's thinking about it. <laughs> All right. Okay. And uh, again, like I said, when you get your coffee, just go out there and just say, you know, Mado, thank you, thank you. So, Paslatka, Paslatka, sunset, Pasosa, sunrise, Pasoti, sunshine, Pasihija, sunflower, Loja Pospuji, ladybug, Tafolova, uh, the Faloba butterfly. And this is one of the ways that one of the speakers says happy birthday. It's not, since happy birthday is not in our culture to say, people come up with different descriptive verbs to say the same thing. And I, I didn't forget about this. I'm just, I'm just gotta find them when they're here because they are teaching everywhere and with um, classes going, you'll see them in the morning and then sometimes see them in the afternoon and. There are so many things going around, but this um Mahaya Gracie, she's the one that wrote this one down. So Lothobi Nita Afachida. So that's the way she says happy birthday. And I'm not sure what Cholo means. But I will uh, look it up and let's see if we can come on. Well, shoot. She was doing so good. Come on, girl. Maybe this one. For some reason, it's not attached. A salaka. Sunset. A sosa. Sunrise. A sorti. Sunshine. A sihija. Sunflower. Loja buswuji. Ladybug. The butterfly. Happy birthday. All right. So those are um, some of the words that we have. And um, like I said, these are words that you can use for any of your sentences. So you know what these things are now. And let's see, we have a few minutes. Does anybody have any questions? I know, you know, sometimes it's a lot of stuff in a, an hour. But uh, does anybody have any questions or comments or anything?
Hiya. Question? Okay, go what ahead. Is, what is L grading? L grading. That's the, um, uh, I don't know how to pronounce it uh, other than it's a different rule. Um, let's see, we've got a book and I'll show you a book next week. I can show it to you. But it's the rules, L rating is you lengthen something. Um, and it's just one of the rules that uh, um, the Muscogee language has. Um, we went over it more so in module one. So there's certain rules for, um, I think it was the first person where you L graded it, you lengthened it. And so instead of V R E, um, L grading in this instance is, uh, uh, let me see, let me go back to the rules. There's L grading, but only in the first person. So second person and third person will have the VRE, but since L grading, which is changing the rules for, for the first person, it's just lengthening it. You lengthen this because it's got an A, and then RE, so Athi is gonna be first person. Athi is gonna be second person. Athi is also gonna be for third person. That's the easiest way I can I can um, share with you. It's just a certain rule for this one for first person. L grading is lengthen, lengthen. So, um, okay. and so like I said, and, and it, it's kind of confusing. And I'll show you the book. Um, let's see, Monday. But um, I, I the name of the rule. Yes, that's the name of the rule. Okay. It's L grading is lengthen. So, you know, um, that's just one of the rules in Muskogee. That, that's how I learned. And uh, it's just a rule. Okay. And we haven't had any rule. The first module, we had L grading. Second, third, and fourth, we did not have L grading. And we got back in fifth, module five, to L grading. But yes, that's just the rule for first person in this, this module. Okay? Thank good, you. good question. All right, Mado. All right, so if nobody has any more questions, I finish. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me quickly go over tones. I know some of you have been with me in learning the different tones and um, enunciations on some of the words, and um, this is why Mahaya Barnett is so adamant about tones. You can spell the same word, but if the tones can change the meaning. Tones and sounds make a difference. All right. All right. So E H E is husband. E H E is also yes. E -h -e. husband. E -h -e. So it's the short sounds. E H -e. E H -e. E -e. E -h -e. is husband. E he for yes. E he is yes. So the sounds e he husband. E he means yes. That's why sounds and tones are really important. That's why you have us uh, the first speakers. E he did. E le e sounds e e le sounds of. Means that, like I said, that's why you have Mahaya Barnett and some of the other speakers talking about tones and sounds, tones and sounds, because it can change the meaning. Italy, for the foot or the lake. Italy, 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 or Italy for dead. You don't want to talk about somebody's foot and then you say dead. <laughs> you know, and you don't want to talk about somebody who or something that's dead and say foot. You know. <laughs> So, Italy, for the foot or the lake. Italy, did, Italy, for yes, Italy, husband. So that's how you differentiate um, things in Muskogee is the way that it's pronounced. All right, does anybody have any questions? Any comments? Did that clear things up for you, some of you guys? All right, Mado. Okay, so since we have a little time, and I'm so proud of this, let me share with you guys.
Here we go. So I put in here all infinitive verbs. So these are infinitive verbs that we have had already. So when you guys are looking to um, um, make sentences, I have a special folder right here for them. And you should have the Google Drive. I put it in there a few minutes ago of everything that we've done. If I can, oh, I'm not good at this. Come on. Oops. Yeah, I'm, there we go. Not gonna even blame it on one screen, it was me. Okay, copy, let me put it in there. Oops. All right, okay. So there's the um, Google Drive. I, like I said, I put all the infinitives right here. You have module one, two, three, four, and five. Um, when I have to substitute for Mahaya Barnett, there's some of her stuff. Um, here is the words of the day. Remember, I'm the one who does the words of the day. Not everything on, on the uh, social media is for me, but I do words of the day. So um, if you guys um, want to review words of the day, they are there in each folder. I just finished with September, and I'm just going to say it's a process, so um, it's not as easy as you would think it would be, but uh, you know, I've tried to put stuff on here. So we've got a few minutes. All right. So the history of the Muscogee Creek is meant for linear. It means two from passed down to the female bloodline. The children were raised by the mother's family. The father left his family and moved in to join the family of his wife. September words and the Muscogee family words. So that is the first one. So all of these are family words that um, we are trying to teach and everything. Oh, my doll, pretty graphics. This is, I always have fun with this. I always love to try to create stuff. I've got a degree in uh, web design and, uh, and uh, digital art. So <laughs> I love to do this. This is, uh, you know, my fun time, I guess. Okay, so there are different versions. And so you see version one, two, and three. Jubal, Hummy, Jubby, the whole family. And I found this graphic and I really enjoyed this one. So you can see I used it a few times. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm not sure why it's not. Oh, there we go. <sighs> okay, like I said, words of the day, September. So, and there's different words for family. That's why I have all three of them here. Enjodika, family. Idina Hungi, family. So just like I was telling you guys, there's different ways to pronounce a lot of different things. And so when I see more than one way, I try to show more than one way. It's she, mother. Ifki, father. It is Jagat, sister. Ijithwa, brother. Some of you guys may know these, but I'll put it out there just in case. Bushi, grandmother. So you can see how it's pronounced and how it's um, spelled. Boja, grandfather. Remember the P's got the B sound. Ba, ba, boja, boja. Boja, boja. Ibushi, paternal aunt. It's Shuji. Maternal, maternal aunt. 
See, there's rules about, you know, if it's a man, you say this. If it's a woman, you say this. It's Gucci paternal uncle. It's almost like in some cultures where one's masculine and one's feminine. And in our home gate, his or her cousin. In Hakbadi, me son of a man. In Uiwa, his nephew. So if you guys want to use these um, words of the day um, vocabulary in any of your your um, your words and your um, sentences, mm -hmm. great. Uh, then just use these vocabulary words because that's why we put them out there. So we'll learn more than one one thing at a time. I don't really eat Dambi. A Julie Elder. Excellent. Cut that one off. Sorry. So these are out there in the, the Google Drive. You guys are welcome to go in there and check it out. All of these have been approved. Frame. All of these have been approved on um, um, content, anywhere from the pictures to how we spell it and how we say it. And this is, like I said, maybe only one way to say some of these things. I mean, there may be others. Mihewa, daughter in law. So, so if somebody says something to you and it's they're saying something and it's different, that's fine because it, it's not all written down. Husband. And that one we just went over, you know, about the long E, short E. Hey, what? Well, so these are all out there, and I always give you guys a little sneak peek because they haven't been released yet. Um, there's a couple more that we're working on that are not quite there when you hear it. Uh -huh. Elder brother, when used by a man, elder sister used by a woman. And so these um, definitions are straight from the dictionary. Um, we'll see. My mate, companion, or relation. And so I'm pretty sure that some of these people are not aware of. Pufki Dadi, our ancestors. All right. So those are for September, and they should be released shortly. But I always like to give you guys a little uh, a heads up. And if you guys, you know, want to hear it again, it's right here in Words of the Day in the Google Drive. All right. Looks like we went a couple couple minutes over. Uh, I think we had a real full day, and uh, you got to uh, listen to a lot of new vocabulary words. All right, if nobody has any questions, I will say Kadam Ji Jagoth, please. I will see you all again.